Okay, guys, let's begin. Part 3. <clears throat> Alright, number 12. So, looks like we got a big pentagon, and it says that AQE and ALB are straight lines. Now, ALMNPQ, so the inside part, is a hexagon with two angles of size Y and four angles of size X. Alright, work out the value of X. Alright, so by extension, we're going to work out the values of X and Y, yeah? So, how should we start this? Well, first things first, let's deal with the Y, because to me that looks a lot easier, because that seems to be covering the pentagon, and of course the hexagon. But let's work with the pentagon. Now, every time you have sh uh, shape equations like this, shape formulas, it's always important to learn certain equations, yeah? The most important one in this case, because you're dealing with interior angles, we need to firstly ask ourselves, how much like does a pentagon add up to? Well, the sum of interior angles is n minus 2, so the number sides take away 2 times 180. Now, because we're working the sum of a pentagon, yes, yeah, so let's say for a pentagon, the sum of the interior angle is going to be, well, 5 take away 2, which is 3 times 180. And that should give us 540 degrees. So we know straight away that all of these angles in this regular pentagon must equal 540. And by extension, because it's regular, this means every angle here must also be the same. So all of this is technically y. Now to get y, because you've got five sides, divide your 540 by five. So therefore 540 divided by five should give us 108 degrees. So therefore y is 108. Now this is easy. Now you've got pretty much everything. Now what we could do here is ask ourselves, all right, so now we've got a hexagon, yeah? What should all of these add up to? So again, using the sum of the interior angles, we say for a hexagon, we can now say that the sum of the interior angle of a hexagon, well, you've got six sides. Six take away two is four times 1AE, and that should give us 720 degrees. Now, just do the quick maths here. We need Now we have to add up all of these lots, so we're going to have X plus X plus X, which is going to be 4X, plus your two 108s, which is uh, 216, and it should total to 720. Now, just rearranging this carefully. If you do it carefully, you're going to have X equals, well, 720, take away 216, all of that over 4, and your answer results to 126 degrees. And that's it, guys. That's literally um, 4 marks for that. All right, number 13. So solve 4X squared plus 6X minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so... That's it. So first things first, when we look at this, we need to recognize straight away that this is a quadratic equation. Yeah. Now for quadratic equations, um, there's only one, well, there's a couple ways to do it, but there's always one way we should do it. Because you do an IGCC and you've got a calculator, use the quadratic formula. All right. If you're not sure what the quadratic formula is, it always looks like that. It's always X equals minus B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC. All of that over 2a. And we just pop in the values, put in a calculator, and you're done. Now, what, what are a, b, and c? Well, just look at the values in front of the x's and the constant. In this case, this one is always the a, this is the b, and this is the c. In other words, a is 4, b is 6, and c is minus 1. Now, plug it in carefully. So you got minus b, so you got minus 6 plus minus big square root sign and then b squared which is 6 squared which is 36 minus and now when you pop in values that stuck together wrap them wrap them around in a bracket so you can get 4 bracket a which is a 4 and a c which is a minus 1 i was about to say 6 all of that over 2 times 4 which is a now yeah so literally just put this on your calculator the first thing you guys want to do is firstly put the plus sign here yeah? And then when you get an answer, do the same thing, but delete this part and put it as a negative sign. And what you, happens actually is that you get two results. The first of it would be 0 0.151, because remember, they wanted the three senior figures. And your second result would be minus 1.65. And that's it, guys. Literally as simple as that. And as always, guys, if you're really enjoying these videos, please give me a like, so that way YouTube will configure its algorithms to put my videos on the search bar. And if you want to see more of this, share with your friends and subscribe. All right, number 14. So guys, in every single paper, you're always going to get some kind of circle theorem or circle geometry question, yeah? 
And I'll tell you one thing, if it looks like this, then it's such a blessing. This is actually one of the nice ones to have. But anyway, let's have a look and see what they want. Well, it says D, E, F, and G. So these four points are on a circle with center O. And the angle of G, O, E, so G, G to O to E is 98 degrees. Okay, so that's the middle one here. Work out the size of angle G, F, E. So G, F, E. So they're talking about working out this angle here. And we're going to call this X for now, yeah? Give a reason for each stage of your working. All right, so this is probably the most important part is your explanation and how clear you could be. Now, what I would do is firstly ask yourself, what can we see here? Well, the first thing I want you guys to always spot is, is this a four-sided shape in a circle? Yes, it's four-sided because it hits at four points in the circle. When you have something like this, you end up having something called a cyclic quadrilateral, yeah? So a cyclic quadrilateral. What that actually means, guys, is that from each corner, so let's say, um, let's call this D here because this is D. We can say that, let's say, the two opposite ends, so F and D must add up to 180. So X plus D equals 180. And the other end, let's say G and E, must add up to 180 as well. So, okay, so this is actually the first property. Now, there's also a second property, and this is this kind of shape. So let me just change color. So you got this kind of shape. So D, G, O, E. So you can kind of see it's kind of like a little ship or something, a little spaceship there. And what we say here is that any angle in the center of the circle is twice the angle as circumference. Yeah. So if you've got this kind of shape, this value is always double what this should have been. So in other words, D is going to be half of that. So we say D is 98 divided by 2. And that should give us 49 degrees, guys. And now we're done. And now we, again, we look at the shape. And remember earlier, we said we got a cyclic quadrilateral, right? This means that X plus D must equal 180, we know D is 49, so now we've got X plus 49 equals 180, just rearrange this, subtract 49, and X ends up being 131 degrees, and you're done, that's all you need to do. Alright, number 15, so write 2 over X minus 1 over X plus 3 as a single fraction, and then simplify it, yeah? All right, so to make anything to a fraction, when you add or subtract, the first thing that should come up in your head is that they must have common denominators. In other words, the bottom needs to be the same. Now, if we're looking at both of them, we've got an x and we've got an x plus 3. The easiest way to do this is to just multiply the, the left fraction up and down by x plus 3 and the fraction on the right up and down by x. Now, whatever you guys do, never add a plus 3 on this because that's just going to mess it up. You don't want to be messing up this fraction. And it doesn't make sense when you do that. So in this case, times it up and down by x plus 3, this is just going to look nice. It'll just be 2 bracket x plus 3 over x bracket x plus 3. And just copy the next bit. Again, times up and down by x, so 1 times x is x. x plus 3 times x, well, just copy out the same one. So x bracket x plus 3. Now, a little tip, guys, yeah? When it comes to the denominator, the bottom bit, don't bother expanding it, yeah? Because there's no point the trick is that you want to try and simplify if you can now because we've kind of linked it up all we do now is just well subtract the top half so 2x times 3 which is no, i'm just gonna do it quick here this is gonna be 2x plus 6 minus x all of that over x bracket x plus 3 and just simplifying this you should get take away x it's just x so it'd be x plus 6 over x bracket x plus 3 and that's it you're done now for part b all right simplify fully this kind of weird quadratic so it's kind of it looks like a difference of two squares to me you got square take away another square over a regular quadratic we do with an a value which is annoyingly a three so to do this first things first we need to know something called dots here yeah? when you see a quadratic in this form with no x in the middle it's likely going to be a difference of two squares. Now, to factorize it easily, my tip is to always think of it this way, yeah? Firstly, always do a double bracket and ask yourself, all right, what's the square root of 9x squared? It's just 3x. So put 3x on both. What's the square root of 4? It's 2. So put 2 on both and then stick in a plus minus. And you're done here, okay? There's, I would explain this, but just keep it like that for now, yeah? 
So next, all over. And now we have to ask ourselves, how do you factorize this thing here? Well, my, my trick is to just use a quadratic formula or there's, there's another smart thing. Because you're going to simplify this, you know the bottom is going to include either a 3x plus 2 or 3x minus 2. And so what I will do, do a double bracket and then put a 3x here and an x. Why? Because 3x times x gives us 3x squared. Now we need two numbers that multiply to make 10. We know one of them is going to be 2 because this is just an exam technique, guys. Yeah, They're always going to do this. The two numbers that multiply to make 10 would be 2 and 5. Now where do we put it? Well, I already know that this one's going to be a 2 here because it has to cancel with the top. And this must be a 5. Now, how do we get minus 17x? Well, here's a trick. Let's suppose we multiply this out, yeah? 3x times 5 is a 15x. And 2 times x is 2x. Well, to get negative 17x, this has to be minus 15 minus 2. So, of course, it has to be 2 minuses. And then you're done. And therefore, now we can just simplify this. So, changing pen. This means that 3x minus 2 cancels with 3x minus 2, meaning you're left with the top, which is 3x plus 2, so you don't need brackets anymore, over x minus 5. And that's it, guys. This question is done. All right, number 16. Work out the area of triangle PQR. Okay, so clear and objective. Let's do it. Now, to work out the area of any triangle, well, there's always one form which we know, which is half times base times height. However, this only works if your triangle is right angled, yeah? Of course, this is just a random triangle. So there's actually another formula which you're taught to learn, which is half A, B, sine C. Well, in this case, A and B are lengths between an angle C. In other words, we look at this triangle, we ask ourselves, all right, here's our A, here's our B, and we need an angle between it. Well, the only angle is Q, so this would be our C. Now, what they want us to do here is actually to do a couple other things before working out area of triangle. And that is to work out the angle C first and probably R as well to get C. And to do that, well, we need to ask ourselves for any triangle, there's only two things you can do, either the sine rule or cosine rule. Thankfully, you're given this in the, in the front of the booklet. I can't remember if it's given for the new 1H2H, even though I do, I do it a hundred times. But my advice is just memorize the formulas because if you memorize them, you know that you're going to use them. If you don't memorize them, you might even forget how to use them. So let's have a look. So first things first, what I'm going to do is ask ourselves, like, let's see if we can use the sine rule. Yeah. Now the sine rule tells us that we need matching pair of length and angle. Yeah. Well, we got 78 degrees, which is opposite 18.5. And well, 12.7 will have to be opposite angle R. Okay. So. According to the formula, we can say that sine r, so sine of the angle over its opposite length, must equal sine of p, in other words, sine of 78, over its opposite length, 18.5. So this is the sine rule, guys, yeah? So always do opposite pairs. Now, what we're doing here, we're trying to find the angle of r, yeah? So let's go rearrange and make sine r the subject. So to do that, I would times 12.7 across. So sine r equals all of those lot over whatever that was times 12.7 now what i want you guys to do is literally just smash this all in the calculator sign like everything on the right side when you do that i want you to then separate sign from r so i want you to sign inverse so sign negative one whatever your answer in your calculator is and when you do that you should get an angle of uh what am i doing an angle of 42.8 one eight one seven dot 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 degrees so you get something like that yeah now when you do this okay so when you do this we now find angle r and we can easily find angle q or c and that is because because we're working with a triangle we know all angles in a triangle always adds up to 180 so my advice now we can just use this angle add it to 78 so this angle let's say 42.1817 plus what was it again 78 And wherever this is, you're going to subtract it from 180. And doing that, you're going to get an angle of, let's say, 59.8183 dot 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 degrees. Now, what I'm doing here, guys, you probably noticed I'm always keeping the answers in extended form, yeah? Try not to simplify yet, because if you do, it might screw up your final answer. And I'm telling you, there's a good chance that you could get a completely, like, you can be right, but you might be off by one or two 
values and you can get it wrong. So always don't round it until the final, final answer. So, okay, so let's update our triangle for a second, yeah? So now we've got this angle C, which was, what did I just write? 59.8183 degrees. And now using the area of a triangle, half AB sine C would be half times A or B, so half times these two lengths. So we can say, all right, let me change the color pen. The area is going to be half times 12.7 times 18.5 sign that angle here 59.8183 and you're done and when you put this in exactly as it is you're going to get a couple answers you might get 101.54 dot 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 if you do this remember to round it to three sig figures yeah so that shoots up to 102 you no know i checked the mark scheme earlier and they also accept 101 so if you get 101 or 102 you're fine but other than that we're done and i hope this video helped you guys if you've enjoyed it, please give me a like, because as I said earlier, if you like my videos, um, they actually end up appearing in the search bar. So YouTube will pick it up and put about other, other people. Of course, only do that if you guys actually like my video. Yeah? But other than that, thank you guys for watching. You know, I appreciate you guys for always being here. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next part. Ciao. I just want to thank you guys for coming to this end of my channel and if you've enjoyed the content so far just go into my channel page hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for more notifications and if you want you can do personalize or all and that way you won't miss any future maths or educational videos anyway guys thank you for watching and see you next time ciao